Hello, my name is Vincent Ciani. I am a documentary photographer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about my project and book, Gays in the Military. But first, I would like to, for you to consider some of the photographs and voices of my subjects. Admirals stated that commanders should hunt high and low to find anyone they can to separate from the military, specifically homosexuals. I had three weeks left in my terms of service when they discharged me. Obviously one of the guys went to OSI or went to somebody and said uh, he's gay. Right away my dreams were being crushed in regards to what I thought the military was. I went in saying that, thinking that I could just not talk about my romantic life. But with these personal relationships and these bonds comes, you know, personal inquiries. You know what breaks up unit cohesion? You know what disrupts morale? is a witch hunt. In the middle of the, the Iraq war, they're searching private emails to see if someone's violated, don't ask, don't tell. And the benefit of the doubt led to the question, are you gay? And I refused to answer. They were caught having sex. They were beat, hospitalized. The fact that I was part of an institution that would allow me to be violated in that way made me rethink my entire decision to come to West Point. Keeping my private life very separate from my professional life and in all likelihood never having a significant relationship. No real relationships. And that was just the way it went. And they don't understand what it does to people. Airborne infantry soldier. Shaking. So afraid. It's the one time in my life I thought about suicide. And I picked up the phone book and found the counselor because I had to talk to someone before I killed myself. Nothing was ever done to the guys that did it because they beat up a bunch of faggots. So who cared? And that's what started me coming out. I resigned and I made my resignation public and I told the academy the exact reasons why I was leaving. I blew up during the interview and, and basically told OSI to go fuck themselves. They gave me uh, Less than honorable discharge. I was put out under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Felt very alienated, very alone. So there was all kinds of conflicts going on in my head. I've compromised my integrity so many times. I, I never told. The Air Force, in essence, asked, and yet I was still thrown out. A lot of people say, they're like, well, if you don't like it, just leave. Well, but you know what? I still love this country, so I'm still going to offend it. The Army was my first love. What if you had to remain invisible? could not speak about the one you loved, or had to lie about what you did last night? What if you had to tolerate hatred directed towards others who were like you? What if you questioned your integrity after you took an oath of honor? What if your civil rights were stripped away and your dignity was violated? What if you were gay and lesbian? Mark Twain said, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. Nothing so liberalizes and humanizes a man than travel and meeting different kinds of people. What Mark Twain meant was that once we place ourselves in an environment that we know little about, meet people we never would have met before, learn about their language and culture, their customs and rituals, experience their world, witness their joys and sorrows, understand their needs, embrace their differences, and begin to see them as human, then fear and the unknown diminish, and bigotry and discrimination fade away. When I was nine years old, I became ill and was hospitalized for on and off for over three years. I was bedridden and separated from my family, and as a result, my family was separated from me. I wanted to travel back then because I wanted to experience a life that was different than mine. So what did I do? I read books and I read newspapers, mostly the obituaries. I had this fascination with what other people's lives were like. Who were they? Who, what and whom did they leave behind? I was experiencing loss and I wondered how other people experienced loss. I wanted to hear their stories, and I wanted, to think, I wanted to understand what other people's lives were like. I grew up during the political and cultural upheavals of the 1960s. I was a child when the first man walked on the moon and at the height of the, of the Cold War. I was a somewhat clueless, yet politically aware high school kid and a hippie college student 
when the Vietnam conflict became the Vietnam War. My convictions were so strong that I would have fled to Canada had my number came up in the draft. I thought I knew what justice was, and I thought I knew where humanity resided. It seemed I did not want to know anything about the military most of my life. After all, I supported peace and the sanctity of life and the fight to end violence and injustice. I thought that made me more human. I thought it made me more humane. I didn't understand why anyone would want to join the military, much less why gay people would join the military, an organization that shunned them. Then in November 2009, I was working in my studio in upstate New York, 60 miles north of New York City. I was listening to the local public radio station. The mother of a recently discharged 19-year-old army private stationed in Afghanistan was being interviewed. When Nathaniel Bowden's mother talked about him with love, pride, and confidence, I began to think about my experience of having to hide my identity to my family and friends and to my colleagues and being the target of bigotry and hate crimes. Other questions came up. I began to think about the military again, what militaries are just. I began to think about wars, what wars are just, what wars are unjust. How do we as civilians, onlookers and outsiders, critics and supporters, benefit from the military? I began to think about how my inability to, to remain open while holding on to my convictions and ethical beliefs prevented me from understanding other people's lives. So what did I do? I began to read the history of the gay ban in the military. I started contacting service members and veterans through social networking sites, uh, contacting organizations that were fighting to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, as well as alumni associations, LGBT alumni associations that were not sanctioned by the military. I began to go to lobby days, and slowly but surely, I built up a list of possible subjects for my project. As I interviewed and photographed them, we would friend each, friend each other on Facebook, and then I would scour their friends for other possible subjects. Soon, people were contacting me to tell me their stories. Ultimately, I interviewed and photographed nearly 120 active duty service members and veterans, traveled over 10,000 miles through, on multiple road trips through 21 states, slept in beds that were provided me or in hotels, traveled all over the creation on a shoestring, shoestring budget just to make this happen. I met Army Brigadier Generals, World War II veterans, Navy, Navy SEAL officers, Marines, Air Force lieutenants, and Coast Guard admirals, and many enlisted men and women, people I never would have met had I not been open to learning about other people's lives. When I entered into their homes, I entered in as a stranger, aware of my role as a documentary photographer, but also realizing the implicit trust that they placed in me as a steward of their humanity. The interviews lasted anywhere between one and a half and four hours. They recollected memories and relate stories of oftentimes violent and unjust treatment, but they were always harsh and difficult stories. Many times, they recollected a past that they had forgotten or had chosen not to remember. I became their confessor and their confidant, and at times their friend. The attempt to establish trust, close trust with them, was a very difficult and precious uh, process, but the ability to achieve it proved to be very fruitful, uh, mostly in a very personal sense. 
I remember many times leaving their house as emotionally drained as they were. Many times I found myself sitting in my car, moved to tears with their words and their voices still fresh in my memory. I was amazed and overwhelmed with the personal sacrifices they made, but more importantly, with the lack of identity that they had to maintain, the loss of love and the ability, the ability to love, the loss of love, and the need to be loved that slipped through their fingers because they had to hide not only from the military, but also from their family and friends. The people that I photographed stood up for their rights. The interviews relayed the facts. It also relayed the emotional, economic, and psychological effects that their experiences in the military had on their lives and career. The photographs evoke their humanity, as well as their strengths and weaknesses, but also our roles in their history. They had the courage to stand up for their rights in relaying their stories. In the words of Nathaniel Bowden, do I regret it? Would I have done it differently? No. Because if I regret what I did, it means that I think that I have done something wrong and there's nothing wrong with me. I have the same rights as other people. Joseph Rocha, a Navy, a U.S. Navy uh, Master at Arms third class, who was studying to be a canine unit dog handler, experienced horrific abuse hazing and humiliation. He says, people say, well, just don't be gay. Just don't let me know that you're gay. But that removes the possibility of me having that photo of my loved one on my desk, talking about my anniversary and having a human aspect to my life. So I ask you to be proud, have respect for who you are, and have respect for your community. But embrace the differences in, in others. Open up your heart to look at others and to see them as human beings. Lieutenant Colonel Victor Fehrenbach, who was unjustly accused of rape by a civilian, and subsequently came under investigation from the Air Force, came out on the Rachel Maddow show on national television. When he returned home to work at Mountain Home Air Force Base in Utah, he said he walked taller and prouder. I learned to walk taller and prouder from the people that I interviewed and photographed. They gave me the trust and the dignity of a friendship many of them very unlikely friends, like Lieutenant Donald Bramer, because our political beliefs were so different. What I learned was that we all have, is that we all have the responsibility to be as good a person and as responsible a citizen as we can. We all have the right to serve our country and to live in a society that we choose to live in in a way that we see fit. And we all have a right to be human. So I ask you, walk taller, walk prouder, walk out of here with respect for yourself and your community, but willing to embrace those differences in others and treat each other in a spirit of brotherhood. If we do this, we will all be living according to the tenets of the Universal of the, of the Declaration of Human Rights and what a beginning that could be. Thank you.